We're here at the IS meeting in Durban, mm -hmm. and we're here with Susan Strasser, who is with ANAC and also with Columbia University. And ANAC is the Association of Nurses and AIDS Care, mm -hmm. who's been around forever. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first that saw a need to fill, right. to learn about how to deal with HIV patients. Yep. And you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, a lot of chapters folded, some came along, and so we're evolving. Mm -hmm. But you're still doing the good work. And, and I think we want to talk more specifically this time. Uh, you did a, a presentation mm -hmm. about the needs, and there's a, a, a whole goals and objectives that mm -hmm. you want to cover. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, talk, let's first talk about ANAC and what it's done, mm -hmm. and then go to that. Okay. Um, ANAC, the Association of Nurses and AIDS Care, has really worked tirelessly to strengthen nurses who are on the front line providing HIV education as well as being a voice for HIV care for the patient and for policies which meet the needs of nurses and patients. And now specifically, what what did you address in this meeting? Because you have some Okay, focuses. sure, sure. So I am based at Columbia University in the ICAP program, and we worked with ANAC and the International Council of Nurses as well as DENOSA, the Democratic Nurses Association of South Africa, to have a two-day pre-meeting. So we had a two-day pre-meeting on the role of nurses in HIV scale-up and in achieving 90-90-90. We had a bridging session today to talk about the role of nurses both in science, leadership, and in practice. And then we've just completed a press conference to talk about the Association of Nurses and AIDS Care call to action because we know that nurses are, a, are the primary provider of HIV services globally. In the majority of countries in the world, nurses are the primary provider of HIV services and primary health care in general. And we have very good data, especially from Malawi and South Africa, here in South Africa, that the majority of HIV services are provided by nurses. But the funding, the seat at the table, the support for does not reflect that. There are, is no nurse on the IAS board. There is very little representation of nurses within WHO as a nursing force. There is human um, resources for health and the health workforce, but nursing specifically is not really named and given the attention it needs or deserves. And you know, there was an old, there's not an old phrase, it's an ongoing phrase. Uh, that's used, especially here in Africa, about nothing about us without us. Right. And right. you're another example of that, right. where you need to right. inject yourself into the planning right. and to also the activities that are necessary to upgrade and, and uh, get further education and further familiarization Correct. with, the, with the, uh, the things that need to be known. And I think what I'm most proud of of nurses is nurses will jump in and do the work. Nurses will get the job done but they need the tools and the resources to do it. They need the education, they need the policies that enable it, and they need the resources. Right. So what, how do you accomplish this? Are you going to be, uh, who, you, who will you address with these issues? Right, so we've made a very intentional effort here at IES to have a much stronger presence for nurses and the nursing voice. We've made just sure to have nursing leaders, nursing policy makers, nursing researchers, as well as frontline nurses. We've brought in, I've brought in a nurse from very rural Kenya to speak about her experience. And she has spoken in a plenary of about 250 people. So we're trying to get the voice of nurses out there. We're trying to get nurses to write more, to speak more, to talk about the work that we do. And we have this call to action, which we have provided to IAS, and IAS is an endorser, as well as UNAIDS. You can hold that up so that we sure. can just hold it like back a little bit towards you. Okay. That'll be good where it'll be seen on the camera. And what we're calling for are four things. We're calling for policy changes to support nurse-led care, greater investments in nursing, Support for interprofessional collaboration because this can't be done alone. It's a continuum of communities, families, nurses, and doctors, and then equity in decision making. Nurses need to have a voice at the table where key policy decisions are made. And nurses want to achieve 90 90 90, but to do that, we need an adequate, well educated, fit for purpose, fit for practice nursing workforce. 
Good. Well, that sounds like you've, you've got your, your goals and objectives down. <laughs> Very clear. So, um, do we are we doing anything in the states about this? Because I mean, mm -hmm. we we we're, I, I don't think this is unique to Africa. No, no, no it's it's, it's everywhere in the world. Nurses are really stretched to the limit, especially mm -hmm. in under resourced settings, but also in settings where resources. Are, are abundant, like in the United States. We still rely very heavily on nurses without adequate backup and support. And we want to be there for the patients, but we need the support to do so. And I'm very happy to say that the American Nurses Association has signed on to this and is fully endorsing this call. So it's a, not a call just for Sub-Saharan Africa or for Asia, it's a call for a global call to recognize nursing, to support nursing, because nurses want to do it. They want to deliver high quality care wherever it may be, in a very rural area or very underserved urban areas. Nurses want to be there, but they want to be there with the right education, the right tools, and the right resources to do that job safely and effectively. Right. Well, I appreciate your advocacy for this. Because Thank you. I know a lot of nurses are very passive and they allow them to to be, you know, kind of innocuous and not seen, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's really uh, the way to go. Yeah, you know, nurses yeah. have, a, have to become powerful and say, look, yep. I want to do the job right. I want yep. to get the job done in a way that the patient is going to be best served. Exactly. And and we're all looking for the same end. Exactly. Yeah, so and it's just a matter of getting that that material out and getting the work done so you can. The right work. Exactly, and I think I've realized that, especially as a woman. We had Stephen Lewis from AIDS Free World speak at our pre-meeting, and he called it very clearly. Mm -hmm. He said, because the majority of nurses are women, it is an issue, it's a women's rights issue, it's a go. women's voices issue. And I was a very shy little girl, <laughs> but I've grown to have a voice. Well, and if you know, get Stephen Lewis on your side, you've got, you got some great. power there. Yeah. yeah. He's pretty powerful. Yeah. He certainly is eloquent. He's very eloquent. And we need to be eloquent for nurses. We need to speak up and really shout out for the great work that nurses do in, in improving access, equity, and rights-based care. Nurses are human rights advocates, and we need to be out there telling our story. Well, you've done that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Sure. I appreciate it. No I'd love to do it. Thank you. Thank